Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that this Liberal government is being dishonest because ultimately the Rouleau Commission will investigate the police forces, but not the Liberal government. We already know what the results will be. The demonstrators are bad, the police is bad, but the Liberal government is perfect. Just like with the other scandals, this time the police forces are going to be thrown under the bus. Why? The Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker. Fact. Fact. During the blockades, there was a great deal of disruption to the economy. Fact. During the illegal blockades, there was a great deal of disruption to the borders. And fact. It was only after we received... Only after we received the opinion of police forces did we invoke the Emergencies Act. It was the right decision, and we will be collaborating with the Commissioner. Thank you. For Medicine Hat, Carson Warner. Here's a fact, Speaker. This government's invocation of the Emergencies Act was a dark day in Canadian history. Legal experts and Canadians know that there is no need to invoke the Act, as Canada's existing laws are sufficient. This government has since shown that they have no intentions of providing any justification for stripping away Canadians' charter rights. They just simply want us to trust them. Really? We don't trust them. That's the issue. How can this government possibly believe that Canadians actually trust them? Mm -hmm. Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, because on this side, we spoke to Canadians. We spoke to Canadians during the blockades, and their experiences were their businesses were shut down, workers were... Order. 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 I mean, we did make it to, we did make it to question number 14 without too much of a uproar. Uh, the Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, as I was saying before I was um, unfortunately interrupted by my colleagues, we spoke with Canadians during the illegal blockades. We spoke with the people that live outside of these chambers, who were held hostage, who couldn't go to work, whose families couldn't take their children to school, whose seniors couldn't get public access to public transportation because of the illegal occupation. It was the police who laid charges, Mr. Speaker, independently because of those interruptions. And it was only after we received their advice that we invoked the Emergencies Act, and we had to. The Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister continues to dodge questions about basic facts of his train wreck of an illegal vacation and the subsequent RCMP investigation that followed. While the attempts to convince Canadians that this issue is solely in the past, it is clear that his skeletons do not remain far from the surface. Although this is not the Prime Minister's first rodeo when it comes to trickery, deception and power wrangling, time and time again he tells Canadians to look away when he comes under fire. When will the Prime Minister get off his high horse and admit that he's not above the law? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, what we're witnessing is, in fact, political theatre. You know, the Conservative Party, virtually since 2015, has been so much focused, uh, Mr. Speaker, on character assassination. Hold on. Let's just hold on. No, no. Honour, member, just hold on a second. I just want to get... All right. <laughs> Calm down. I, I will let you start over. I'm going to let the member, as soon as we quiet down, I will get the member to start over. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the official opposition makes the point. You know, they, they're so much focused on character assassination and playing this game, and as much as they want to continue that, fixation, uh, that fixation, I can assure members opposite, we as the government, and particularly the Prime Minister, will continue to focus our attention on what's happening in the real world, what Canadians are facing coast to coast to coast, and we will continue to deliver the types of policies, legislation, and budgetary measures that's going to make a difference in their lives. The Honourable